you're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Join your hosts, Steph and Tara, every Wednesday morning as they dive into a new witchy topic. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. This is Steph. And this is Tara. And you are listening to episode 42, Witchcraft for Lazy Witches. Woohoo! So today's episode is going to be a, a little bit different. We have 100 tips for lazy witches. <laughs> yes. Just quick little ideas that you can do, ways to incorporate a little more witchcraft into your day or just simple tips for your practice. And we are just going to read straight down the list um, and try not to include all of the million hours of commentary we would normally do. So she said try. So keep that in mind. Try. <laughs> so if there's anything on this list that you have a particular question about after listening, definitely reach out to us, um, you know, on Instagram or email or Patreon, whatever. And we will answer the question about any specifics, but we're going to try to just straight read them because we thought it would be fun to offer up a hundred different ideas for you. So many different ideas. All right, getting started. And these are in no particular order. So, ta-da! Just the order we thought of them. (laughs) Yeah, literally that way. So, number one, stir drinks and batters in a clockwise motion to encourage magic and positivity. Number two, pick dandelions and make a wish. Number three, inscribe sigils, I do not know why I chose this one, on the bottom of your pie crust before pouring in the filling. Number four, plant lavender by your garden gate for luck. Number five, plant a cactus by your garden gate for protection. Number six, bless your kitchen utensils, such as spatulas and wooden spoons, that all the food you make with them will promote healing and love. Number seven, find a crystal necklace you really love and charge it under the full moon. Wear it the rest of the month to bring the energy of the full moon with you. Number eight, keep a roller ball of lavender essential oil at your desk so you can rub it on your wrists whenever, you, whenever work gets a little too stressful. Number nine, carve sigils into the sand at the beach and let the tides release them into the universe. Number 10, keep mini altars in rooms you use regularly, like the bathroom and kitchen, so you're always close to a few special spiritual items. Number 11, purchase or make a piece of jewelry from a protective stone like smoky quartz or obsidian. Number 12, do a tarot reading first thing Saturday morning to lend some grounded perspective to the weekend. 13, go outside on a full moon and look up at the bright sky. 14, go outside on a new moon and look up at the dark sky. 15, say an incantation of blessing over a bottle of wine as you pour it into a decanter. Number 16, carve your own basic runes out of common materials such as pebbles. 17, carry a charm bag in your purse or pocket made from ingredients for protection or to calm your nerves. 18. Mix a cocktail with magical ingredients associated with the themes of each season, which would be fertility for spring, abundance for summer, release for fall, and reflection for winter. 19. Cast a spell on your sunglasses or eyeglasses to help you see the truth or to increase your psychic insight. 20. Practice not magic in the form of knitting or crocheting, binding your intentions into every stitch. 21. Wear a crystal pendulum as a necklace so you're always ready to do a little scrying. 22. Make your own scented candles with oils and herbs to infuse them with particular magical properties. 23. Place crystal grids for protection or abundance at the bottoms of pots before planting. 24. Burn sage or cedar first thing in the morning to start your day off fresh. 25, sleep outside under the stars and look for constellations and shooting stars. Number 26, paint sigils on your mailbox. 27, hang a silver bell on your front doorknob for good luck. Number 28, add rose petals to sangria for love. Number 29, eat a pinch of thyme before bed to have sweet dreams. Number 30, when you wake up in the morning, start the day with five minutes of yoga or meditation before you even get out of bed. 31, tuck a sprig of lavender under your pillow before bed to promote peaceful sleep. 32, write down your dreams each morning and compare what you dream about at different times or when the moon is in a different phase or sign. 33, look up at the night sky on an average evening and watch the constellations move above you. 
34. Drink turmeric tea or milk, also known as golden milk, to start your day off healthy. 35. Keep one white candle and one black candle on your altar that you only light on the full moon and new moons, respectively. Number 36. Paint your front door purple to promote spirituality in your home. If this isn't possible, try hanging a purple wreath on the door or gate. 37. Water the plants in your garden counterclockwise to banish negativity from the space. 38. Paint your nails a color associated with the intention of your spell or ritual before you begin so that your hands become your wand. 39. Plant red geraniums by your front door as it is a traditional sign of witchcraft. 40. Plant rosemary by your front door to invite love in. 41. Bless more than just water and crystals on the night of the full moon. Set out your essential oils, nail polish, or special bottle of champagne, whatever you're planning on using. 42. Dry the first herbs or vegetables you harvest from your garden and incorporate them into a charm bag to ensure continued abundance. 43. Wash your windows with moon water for extra clarity. 44. Store sugar into your tea or coffee with intention, willing sweetness into your day and life. 45. Draw sigils or write a brief protective spell on the inside of your dog or cat's collar. 46. Write protection or happiness spells on the backs of favorite family member photographs to send your intention to those individuals. 47. Burn a photo of a toxic individual you wish to release or banish from your life in a fire safe container. I know we weren't going to say any commentary, but I cannot stress it enough fire safe container because I've done that in a not fire safe <laughs> container and it's the worst idea ever. So I try to emphasize it with my tone. <laughs> fire safe. 48. Place crystals associated with abundance in the bottom of mason jars. Cover with dirt and plant small plants such as succulents in them. The crystals will act as both a drain and encourage abundant growth. 49. Find a magical habit you can practice while doing mundane things like watching TV, such as not magic. 50. Have a small full moon gathering with friends. Drink wine, share stories, and enjoy each other's company. 51. Add chips of a relevant crystal to your next essential oil roller ball to boost its magical power. 52. When somebody special gives you flowers, dry them and incorporate them into a charm bag for continued love and romance. 53. Bless light bulbs on the full moon to provide those in your home with the ability to clearly see the truth. Number 54. Add edible flowers to a salad, especially those magically associated with health and healing. 55. Line your windowsills with protective crystals. This is also very pretty. Number 56. Make smudge sticks for the seasons using chamomile buds for spring, lavender for summer, sage for fall, and pine for winter. Imbue nail, oh, 57, sorry. Imbue nail polish with a magical That's property you would like to spread into the world around you before painting your nails. For an extra boost, align the color of the polish with the color associated with your intention, such as pink for happiness or purple for spirituality. Number 58, choose a favorite outfit to reserve for rituals so that each time you put it on, it helps you get in the right mindset. Or just go sky clad. Sorry, I had to put that one up there. <laughs> 59, carve magical symbols and sigils into pumpkins at Halloween. Number 60, make your own tea blends to drink during specific spells and rituals using ingredients that align with your intentions. 61, keep a bottle of blessed wine by the stove so you can add a splash to any dish. 62, make specific essential oil diffuser blends to use during spells and rituals using a combination of oils that align with your intentions. 63, if you frequently work with kitchen magic, keep a special grimoire in your kitchen to record magical dishes as you make them and their success or failures. 60, mix essential oils with magical properties aligned to your intention for a spell or ritual with that carrier oil and then anoint yourself with it. 65, surround your bed with crystals to encourage psychic dreams or peaceful sleep, depending on the crystals. Number 66, as storms create powerful magic, incorporate the weather into your spells and rituals by gathering common elements such as leaves blown by the wind, rainwater, and snow for your use. 67, carve symbols for abundance into wooden popsicle sticks, then write the name of each plant in your garden on them and stick them into the soil to identify them. You can also anoint the sticks with abundance oils, Number 68, create a custom wind chime to hang in your garden using crystals for protection, abundance, or purification. 
69. <laughs> Add a few drops of a soothing essential oil to a bathtub to bathe in before a ritual or just after a long day. 70. Cleanse your tarot cards with simple materials such as a ring of salt around the deck before or after use. 71. Compile a set of tools inspired by your own heritage or current region, such as crystals and herbs found in your native country or area. Number 72. Decorate your home with seasonal materials for the Sabbaths, such as pine boughs, fallen branches covered in fall leaves, pine cones, and acorns. 73. Use magical lyrics, or musical lyrics, sorry, when you're too tired to make a spell. Number 74. Use sigilscribe.me to create a sigil. It's a website. And it's free. Get it? 75. Spray curtains with sandalwood water so when the wind blows in, it blows in protection. Number 76. Save incense ashes and use them to make black salt. 77. Burn allspice, which is, smells delightful, to draw money and luck to you. Number 78. Keep clean, fresh moon water in the fridge to give recipes a magical boost. 79. Keep your eggshells. Wash, powder, and store them for protection and fertility spells. They can also be used as a fertilizer. 80. Grow basil in the windowsill of your kitchen, both for cooking and for bringing protection and prosperity. I do this. 81. Keep a crystal or quartz crystal by the oven to make food taste better. Number 82. Hang a horseshoe over your front door. 83. Hang your bez besom. Wow, I almost messed that one up. Over your front door. <laughs> Both of these things bring luck to the people that are passing under the door and also provide protection for your home. Number 84. Name your Wi-Fi the beginning of a spell word and then the password the end of the word. So anytime someone types in the password, they recharge the ward that is protecting your house. This is an A plus one, guys. Super easy <laughs> and effective. Anyway, 85. Use empty toilet paper rolls to contain spell ingredients you want to bury. 86. Add rose petals to a bath for some easy glamour magic. 87. Personalize your candles for spells easily by adding a few drops of essential oils to tea light candles. Also very cheap. <laughs> 88. End your day with a few minutes of meditation before bed to promote restful sleep. 89. Use dandelion leaves to make an easy and quick digestive tonic. Just add hot water. Number 90. Plant rosemary in your garden to promote love, long life, and happiness. 91. Add lemon to white vinegar and water to make an effective cleaner that will help. This is a long list, guys. Disperse confusion, ease worry, release doubt, increase feelings of security, alleviate fear and clear negative vibrations from your home. Plus it just works really well as a cleaner too. Number 92, set up your altar in an unused shoebox. Great for small spaces and those still in the broom closet. It also limits the amount of things you put on your altar, keeping it super simple. 93, place your acme under the sun for a full day to cleanse and charge it. Depending on the energy of your acme and what you use it for, you may also leave it under the light of the full moon. Number 94. Mark the bottle holding your dried herbs with health sigils so every time you use those herbs in a recipe, it will promote health in those who eat the food. 95. If you're painting or wallpapering a room, paint a sigil on the wall under and then paint over or wallpaper over it. Number 96. Anoint light bulbs with essential oils so every time you turn on a light in the room, the room is filled with the scent. 97. Make a glamour rinse and use it on your hair whenever you need a little glamour magic boost. Number 98. Anoint the bottom of your feet with ritual oil and walk in a circle to create a sacred space outside. 99. Clean in a clockwise pattern to promote good luck in your home or wherever you happen to be cleaning. And number 100, our final and favorite one, is to listen to this podcast, which you're already doing <laughs> every Wednesday morning. So you can start your Wednesday with a 30-minute or less boost of witchy information. I would say about 30 minutes. Sometimes we go over. We have lots to say, guys. Yeah, sometimes we go crazy. But this one we kept to, like, 15 minutes, guys, which I'm very impressed because I wanted to comment on almost all of them. I had lots of comments also. I was excited because I wasn't the first to comment. Steph was. I commented more after, but Steph broke first, guys. <laughs> I broke first.
Yes, we made it almost halfway. It was 48, I think. Oh, God. I'm so proud of both of us. Fire for fire safe containers, guys. Because I did that once in an apartment that I lit uh, pictures on fire. The whole place is like filled with smoke. It's like, oh, it's bad. It's bad. Don't. Yeah. Learn, lesson learned. But for a lot of these, I wanted to comment that we have um, information either coming up on this podcast or we have things planned on our Patreon account that will show a lot of these in action or provide a lot more information about them. I was specifically thinking um, the black salt using ashes to make black salt that's coming up on our Patreon. That's really easy. We're going to talk about salt in general, either on a podcast episode or on Patreon, the different kinds of salt and their uses in witchcraft. So there's a lot of things on this list that we are going to cover and more get more into or, you know, show in practice on Patreon. So we, Definitely hope that you come in and join us on our Patreon account. I'll link that in the show notes so you can get to it easily if you haven't been there yet. But it should be a lot of fun. And one thing, too, is, like, you don't have to do all of these, but there's no harm in combining a bunch of these. I do yoga every morning, and I meditate every evening. So, like, you can do both things. Like, you don't have to do only one, and you don't have to do all 100. I do not do all 100. <laughs> I will say that right now. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't either. Uh, but there's just a lot of simple and fun ways to make your day a little more Magical. witchy. Because I know a lot of people struggle with, and myself included, wanting all of their witchcraft to be more complicated rituals that they time for like the right time of day and right day of the week and right you know phase of the moon and incorporates candles and crystals and herbs and all kinds of things to just make like a really complicated ritual and I love doing that but it doesn't need to be you kind of lose yeah there, it, it's difficult to keep up that kind of practice regularly yeah. so doing these sort of daily things is a nice way to keep witchcraft in your life every day between those more complicated spell workings yeah it doesn't have to be complicated to be a spell um it can be very very simple and a lot of these, once you start them, you'll notice a difference right away. And some of them you might not notice a difference, but it's still fun to do. It's a good good way to keep it at the forefront of your mind. I think you'll notice a change in your own energy yes. and just how you feel going throughout a day, especially if you start with a little meditation in the morning and then you go into like a glamour hair rinse in the shower and then you you know, stir some positivity and sugar into your coffee clockwise. Those are all very easy things, but you're starting your day on a totally different note than if you roll out of bed all crabby and rush off to work. So it just, a, you'll notice, you'll notice a, a change in your own attitude and the positive things that, that come from that. So I have insomnia and the meditation before bed and I have crystals that I place around my bed. They help so much guys. Like I'm almost sleeping normally for probably the first time since, I don't know, ever. <laughs> Very true. You have had insomnia the entire time I've known yeah. you. I, decade plus. I hit 13 and my body's like, here's some hormones, stop sleeping. So <laughs> that's just kind of how that worked. <laughs> but that is all we have for you for this uh, quick episode. Hopefully you enjoyed our little lazy witchcraft tips. Um, and uh, let us know definitely on Instagram um, which ones that you either already incorporate into your life or which ones you plan on trying soon. And if you have any questions about any of them, um, some of them are kind of broad. Some of them are kind of detailed. So, so reach out. We will answer anything. Yes. We will see you next week. Bye. Follow us on Insta. Thanks for listening to Witch Wednesdays with Steph and Tara. Love our content? Consider donating at anchor.fm slash witch dash Wednesdays to help keep our podcast up and running. Please leave us a voicemail on that same site if you have any questions or comments and follow us on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast.